Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our talk today entitled Supercharged Analytics for Prometheus Metrics with Spark, Presto, and Superset. So just a little bit about us before getting into the talk. So we have Rob Skillington. He is currently the CTO and co-founder at Chronosphere. Prior to Chronosphere, he was at Uber and was one of the creators of M3DB. And then he's also a contributor for Open Metrics. And then myself, Gibbs Cullen, I'm currently a developer advocate at Chronosphere. Uh, and prior to that, I was a product manager at AWS. So uh, we're just gonna briefly jump into a preview of what's to come uh, to kind of set the context. Uh, so essentially we're going to be looking at um, Apache Superset, which is a, a UI um, that connects to arbitrary SQL backends. Uh, and in this uh, talk, we'll be connecting to Presto, which is talking to uh, Prometheus backend. And you can see that arbitrary metric names can be queried against uh, once you set up everything correctly. And this you know, allows for deep, uh, deeply complex analytical queries to uh, be issued against uh, Prometheus metrics over very long time horizons. Uh, but for now, I'll uh, throw it back to you, Gibbs. So just going to go through the agenda real quick. Um, so we're going to start out talking about kind of how and why you would want to use your metrics for analytics. Uh, after that, we'll go into a bit about why you, using your metrics data is a bit challenging with the current monitoring solutions, followed by a couple of different ways that you can solve this problem. So basically looking at what a solution would look like for this. And then we'll give a little bit of a demo, uh, followed by time for Q&A at the end. So quick overview of metrics. So metrics are essentially um, used mostly for monitoring and alerting purposes. As you can see, this is a pretty standard way to view your metrics, um, as you would like in a Grafana dashboard here. So you can see your metrics over time in a variety of different views, um, which you can then set alerts. So set alerts against. Um, one thing though is that me metrics are also very valuable in terms of they also have a lot of historical data, so they can also be used for analytic purposes. So now we're going to go into a few examples of how you would use your metrics for analytics, starting with this first example with cost monitoring. So as you can see in this graph here, you have Basically, this would basically be an example of a cost report that you might get from your cloud provider. So zooming in a little bit more into, into the, the different diagrams here. So you can see that over time, your EC2 usage is increasing month over month. Um, and that's a little bit different than the other services you're using, which are basically just staying steady or even decreasing. So given this pattern, um, you would then want to try to understand why your EC2 usage is increasing over time. So one way to do this would be to look back in time and see if any of the events or things you might have done, uh, changes you might have made, could have triggered this change. So for example, going back to June 2020, um, let's say you went ahead and changed all of your EC2 instances from SSD to spinning disk in the effort or in the hope that this would then lead to a decrease in usage, overall usage. So as you can see, it had the intended behavior in July with the usage going down. However, in August, it spiked up and then in September, it got even higher. So you'll want to then understand why this behavior all of a sudden changed after one month. So a way to look into this um, a little bit further uh, is, is to kind of use your metrics and do more granular analytics on those metrics. So in this example, we've zoomed in to just the EC2 usage component of the, of the graph from the previous slide. So you can see here that the various EC2 usage amounts are broken out into four applications. Um, and that you can see also that application C here is mainly the is the main culprit in terms of 
the increase in usage over time. And this is because the, um, you know when you did switch over your EC2 instances to spinning disk, the A, B, and C or A, B, and D applications performed well with that change. However, application C performed poorly and needed more EC2 instances um, because yeah, it, it just did not perform as well with the spinning disk. So now that you have that insight into what was the main driver of this increase in usage of EC2 over time, you can then go back and kind of change your cost monitoring strategy and revert, um, revert any of the changes that might have led to those increases. So in this example, you would then want to um, change application C back to SSD as you found out that it, you know, it performed poorly with spinning disk. So by doing that, you are then able to go back to your intended behavior and then start seeing the in intended results, which is a decrease in EC2 usage over time. Thanks a lot for uh, walking us through that, Gibbs. Uh, yeah, I wanted to walk you through another uh, analytics case here uh, on your metrics. Uh, so and essentially there's uh, plenty of other things, uh, you know, we can do with, with metrics um, with uh, when, we're, when we want to take a more analytical view um, <clears throat> of uh, the data that they represent over time. That is a little bit more difficult to do with the monitoring, uh, and, and observability tools out there today. So we can do uh, data science, uh, perform data science operations on these to, to kind of like understand a little bit more um, at, a, at a very deep granularity on uh, how different applications or infrastructure um, or you know, product things uh, like, uh, um, like how your, your actual uh, technology like um, system is, is actually performing um, uh, and kind of dissect them using, uh, you know, more typical data science like queries. Uh, and then uh, we can look at, you know, optimizing essentially our systems uh, similar to, to kind of uh, what, you know, Gibbs was, uh, the, the use case Gibbs was looking at, um, but with a more granular focus on specific systems deployments. Um, and and uh, yeah, and, and kind of like um, discovering hidden waste, uh, which is harder to do with with just a graph. Uh, and then you know, looking at uh, forecasting and and um, how uh, how forecasting can be used uh, with with metrics uh, in an analytical setting. So basically, we're going to walk through a, a example here uh, to extract some some more probabilities. Um, and backtest basically what different um, models uh, have been performing, um, and, and perhaps under you know different systems that you're that you're writing. So this example, we're going to look at a high volume real time ad bid platform. Um, we're going to look at say uh, number of ads uh, purchased, uh, number of ads that led to click throughs, latency to respond to an ad request. Um, and then we're gonna, uh, so those are the, the key KPIs that like would be tracking um, with Prometheus metrics. Um, and then, you know, we'd also be look, looking at, and these are really high volume. So obviously things like latency and, um, you know, high granular uh, uh, counts per second you would wanna use um, with, with metrics. Uh, and then we're gonna label these metrics with uh, things such as the display ad type, um, the regions, uh, the machine learning model used, and the different um, input configuration parameters uh, for each uh, model that, that was used. Um, so if we look here, uh, we can see this is kind of like a distribution on uh, the, uh, the click-through rate, which is you know, calculated by uh, number of ad volume uh, versus number of ad volume with, with purchases, sorry, with, with click queries on, um, after the ad's been purchased. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you can see here basically how the, um, the different regions are performing with different uh, display ad types. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, what's, what, what you really want to be able to do is look at how the different machine learning models um, that was you know, being used that were being considered to serve your traffic um, or A-B tested uh, uh, performed. So 
you could even do shadow A-B testing where you're not actually, um, you, you're only like shadowing a few percent of your request to these different machine learning models with different parameters tuned. And then using um, metrics on these like high volume uh, kind of uh, events that are happening um, and also uh, using metrics to look at the different latency uh, on on how these uh, these parameters are they're actually uh, performing you know you could kind of see what the different perhaps click-through rates would be of the diff of the different machine mo machine learning models um your your uh your kind of a b testing uh versus like a control uh set of control units so uh you know that's that kind of thing is is uh obviously possible with with prometheus um metrics today it's just over large time horizons with very high numbers of uh, models and uh, and different variables in terms of like display ad type regions, like other kind of variables that go into different segments you want to track to analyze all those various different segments across the various different um, model parameters uh, that you're uh, that you're testing. Um, that becomes a lot harder to do just on a simple graph, obviously, and uh, SQL um, becomes quite quite useful here. And then the second use case, uh, you know, I want to walk through is essentially um, optimizing uh, use systems on a more granular level than than even just the breakdown of of microservices. So, for instance, for you can with a SQL query, you know, enumerate every single um, <clears throat> application group by service that that you're running on a say a Kubernetes cluster, and work out how much of the CPU quota that you've reserved or requested for the application is actually being used. Um, and then you can see that over time, uh, you know, over very large time horizons um, and using you know, SQL or uh, uh, other tools um, at your disposal uh, that you use in a more typical analytical um, uh, use case, you can actually get a very highly granular um, information here on, on uh, on what actual services are, are uh, you know, becoming wasteful over time um, versus others. And then, uh, then also like we can use, of course, um, these, uh, these same type of analytical queries uh, to forecast uh, how many resources your system is gonna use. Um, and so here's an example of, you know, an organization that's forecasting a growth of, uh, Request per second uh, by um, uh, by their system by end of year uh, for thirty percent. Um, however, if you look at this graph, you can see that the number of requests per second actually does not linearly use more CPUs. It actually exponentially uses more CPUs. And uh, when you break down that average CPU use uh, by service on an even more granular level, you know you could see essentially which which service is, uh, which application in your stack is contributing to that higher growth of CPU versus others. So you kind of know which um, services you're gonna have to reserve more resources for, uh, <clears throat> which will then let you make the decision on whether you actually need to uh, actually um, make that service perform better, or do you have enough budget to just go and um, uh, purchase the necessary resources and expand the cluster um, ahead of time to safely handle that traffic. Uh, and you know, th th there's uh, Dan Liu uh, who has done a lot of prior art on this, uh, and I highly advise you reading his blog there um, on Dan DanLiu.com uh, metrics uh, analytics. Uh, you can really find some some really amazing insights uh, when you kind of start to be able to run uh, these these arbitrary queries. Um, and he describes here that in one case, he found a service that was wasting enough RAM to, to pay his entire salary for a decade. Uh, and so now Gibbs is gonna walk through uh, a, a bit more of, of the problem of why you, this can't really be done today. Yeah, so why is metrics analytics hard? So. Um, at a high level, this mostly comes down to some performance constraints with existing monitoring monitoring solutions such as Prometheus. Um, so they just, you know, with these longer term queries, 
that span a high cardinality set of metrics, they don't, they either just don't perform well or they will time out when they are running. Um, and this is due to a couple different things here with looking at Prometheus in particular. So with Prometheus, um, there is a max sample limit. So this means that there is a limit to the number of samples you can query. Um, they also does have a default timeout of two minutes. So this may run, become a, a problem with your longer term queries as they do take longer to run. So you may end up um, timing out your query request. So, and then another, another constraint here is that results are typically computed in memory. So, you know, if, if something does take up a lot of memory or is a very large, large query, then it can lead to an out of memory or just taking up too much. And then at that point, your query will not be feasible to run. So what would you need in order to resolve these, these constraints? Um, so when looking for a solution for this, um, kind of one thing that you would want to look for is some, you know, um, some tools that can help with executing your large queries or um, queries of arbitrary size. So in this example, um, both Spark and Presto would be good tools for this as they are um, built to spill data to disk if something, if the, if the request does not completely fit into memory. And so by doing that, then you can make sure that you don't use too much of your memory when fulfilling these requests. Another thing that you would want to look for is a way to utilize and get more insights from your data, um, specifically through some machine learning tooling or Spark. So in this example, um, Spark is actually very compatible with and, and it integrates with MLlib. So by, by, by using Spark, you're able to use the different uh, machine learning capabilities within MLlib. And this will be provide even more insight into your, into your metrics data. It'll also make it so that it's a lot easier to use for you know, the, the end users of your data or your analytics, such as your data scientists, for example, as um, you can now you know, use and query your data or your analytics through you know, some of their more native languages, such as Java and Scala. Yeah, and then finally, um, what we'd want in our solution is the ability to join metrics with other data so that not all of your monitoring data is living in metric store. So for example, here, um, you might want to join your metrics data with the kind of um, cube cluster node information that you might have in Elasticsearch or even MySQL. So, um, so that's what we would want to have in a solution for looking at our uh, metrics data. So now I'm going to jump into a demo here. And uh, yeah, you can find the demo and all the working code at this repository uh, in, at github.com forward slash chronosphere IO forward slash demo dash metrics dash analytics. Uh, essentially, what I'm going to do is uh, this repository has a Docker compose file in it and a bunch of Docker containers. I'm going to make start, which is going to create a Presto container. A super a Apache superset container and uh, a whole bunch of um, setup uh, scripts that is going to kick off here. And so I'm going to create basically a admin username and an admin password for Apache superset. Uh, it's going to go and migrate uh, all its default migrations um, that it runs when it starts up. Uh, and then we're going to go log in and uh, connect to Presto through Apache Superset. Uh, so now that Apache Superset has done its super, uh, it's done its uh, startup, uh, we are going to go in and remove the default uh, SQLite data source. We're going to create a Presto data source. It's going to talk to the Presto container on port 8080, talk to the Prometheus connector with the default schema. Um, and once we have created that, uh, we then visit the SQL editor, uh, which is actually restored the old result that I previously had here. Um, so I'm going to, we're going to deep dive into looking, uh, at, uh, basically 
yeah, this use case of uh, looking at memory. Um, and so, you know, I hit the explore button there from the, from the SQL editor. And so now I'm in uh, basically a, uh, a, a um, visualizer, uh, visualization um, explorer. And essentially I've chosen line chart visualization type here and then I'm going to go in and edit the data source which is came from the query that I ran in my um, SQL editor and I'm just going to remove the uh, the limit that was uh, put on there originally um, so that we can uh, query arbitrary amounts of data and so uh, yeah we're going to look at say the past three weeks but you can do past three months what have you I just don't want to query to run too long because uh, this is a demo. Um, and so, uh, but of course the power is to run really long queries, obviously. Uh, so here we're gonna do, yeah, a sum on um, the, uh, the original query, which as I showed here was container memory RSS memory. Um, and we're going to basically uh, filter on the labels <clears throat> to make sure that we have uh, a container name on them. Um, so we're gonna say uh, container name element at, sorry, uh, must with container name key must not be nil uh, in the label map. Um, and then we're gonna group by the container name label. Uh, and we're gonna set some really high limit. One, two, three. Okay, 1 billion to be exact, um, but we should make it stick. <clears throat> uh, and now we're going to run our query. So, uh, yeah, this, this query is, is running on Presto. And actually, if you go visit the Presto interface, uh, you can see uh, that it is running it uh, across a few different parallel workers. And you can see here that's running multiple splits because it, so basically it's sp split our query up into 70 different splits and ran them all um, on different workers. Although this is locally in a Docker container, so just sharing one machine here. And they and they see it 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 uh, process results and and um, we we now are looking at past three weeks of data. Uh, so this this basically has grouped everything by container name um, so if you had even hundreds or thousands of containers it's going to group by the the uh, the actual deployment um, rather than the individual pods in that deployment and then of course you know the great power is that you can really do this over months or years or any arbitrary amount of time um, and uh, and you know presto of course will distribute that work um, if it's on a single you know, if you've only got a few machines and it runs out of memory, it's going to simply uh, spill that to disk like uh, Gibbs talked about. Um, and it, it really does allow you to do some, some really large um, arbitrary queries over a very, very significant amounts of, of data. Uh, so yeah, and that's, that's look, us looking at over a three month period. So um, yeah, I, I hope this was useful. Uh, and I hope you uh, you know get to try this at home if if um, if you're interested. Uh, and, but otherwise, want to say thank you and, and would love to answer some questions uh, if if anyone has any. Thanks.